So these central ones on the Ford connector unit are going to be kind of much shorter. They're going to be just for the ones with the ports on either side here. If you do happen to need to swing it around the back of the car for any reason, the outer ones are the ones you're going to want to use. Back to Plug and Play V, I'm Steve, and you join me at Waterford Commons Electrify America station, which is uh, one of only two sites that has these the Electrify America branded Alpatronic HYC 400s, most crucially, with these the only current NAX handles, NAX J3400 at uh, Electrify America stations. This one in Waterford, Connecticut and one of down in Florida, just south of Orlando. So only a couple of sites at the moment. These are uh, pilots. So we're getting the tests in to see if Electrify America goes this route. This one is obviously uh, having some issues, but you do have two here. So let's take a look at our session and see how these Alpatronic units are holding up for Electrify America. So you've got four plugs. This is not as common as you'll see. The uh, Iona ones have dedicated CCS and NEX units separately on dispensers. These show me here. You can see number three, that's that far one, is out. But let me get plugged in and then I can assess the site itself. So the right side here is Charger 01B. It's 56 cents per kilowatt hour. So just to go through this, because not many people will have seen it. You go to 1B, you select a connector in this case. I can upgrade, but I don't want to. Do the usual charge process. That will say the authenticating screen on this side. Plug in. So it's kind of tight around here, you'll see. Maybe it's just the way I parked. But there's not that much space between I'm doing this one-handed as well, so it may not be ideal. But let's get the authentication process. This is a stock Albatronic screen, I think, because it looks the same as the, or at least the messaging for delivering power and all this is the same. See these on Mercedes Benz, high power charging, uh, Iona, obviously, and then we're starting to get them up here in the northeast in Apple Green as well. Definitely quite chilly, it got actually colder than I expected, so maybe it didn't get to do its full battery warming, but it had a solid 22, 23 minutes. So we should get close to 150, or above at least. We'll start off around that 120, and then we should have plenty of headroom here to get into a full charge. So this is more the temperature and my not quite calculating enough time to do the battery heating but we should see that jump up pretty soon but I'm gonna take a look around the site I don't want to be here too long so I need to head on to New York City and uh, I want to get a look at these chargers while we have a chance so let's do that and see if we get full power so you can see they're openly asking for feedback there 56 cents per kilowatt hour it's pretty clear on the screen itself there's the one we're on 1a and 1b Four handles, uh, two of which can be used any one time. You can see them pulling out of here, pretty clearly labeled at the top, clearly labeled on the handle, so all that's good. Then, uh, problematic at this one, but you would think they would want to get that back online pretty quickly, what with it being a uh, test site and all. I'd imagine this gets pretty busy at some points. It's uh, quite early here, just starting up at 6.50. So probably not going to find it particularly busy. But... So no touch screens, as we see. Can't do any of that. Just have to select the one. And you see the Nex is unavailable because I'm using the CCS on that side. I forgot we don't actually have to watch any of this, it did peak. It's probably pulling back now because we're at, uh, it doesn't seem like it's very high. So some temperature related stuff maybe there. 
but doesn't really matter. Just need to crank that in and get out on the way to New York. Let's have a look at these next handles. As, I say, as I'm using this one, it's illuminated blue. You can take out the necks here. A little bit chunkier than maybe people used to with a regular Tesla handle. See a little more heft to that particular cable. Uh, maybe it's easier for me to maneuver one that is free on this side. It does make it a little more complicated with the multiple handles here. As I say, with Iona, you have the two. These are really, really not that easy to maneuver behind the bollards and everything, but you can kind of see you lose the uh, some of the space. There is no actual swing arm on this one. It's just presumably because they're plugging into a Tesla and I guess it would be back here. They can just take it and pop it in. I mean, assuming they're catering to Tesla. But if this was the Arnic 5, I guess it wouldn't be a big deal. You can see you get quite a lot more help with this one. It's noticeably easier, still a heavy cable, but because they've gone with the swing arm on this one, you know, you can get it over to the other side of the space, pretty much cater to every port position, because this is quite a wide space. Obviously this is the disabled access space, so you've got that as well. But uh, this is notably easier to move with that swing arm doing the heavy lifting. You can have a quick look in the car. Yeah, only eight minutes to 80%, so it's not like you have to be here forever. In any case, it gives us enough time to do these photos, take a look at the site, and uh, everything else we wanted to do. There is what here? A Yankee candle, a rather, confrontational seagull there in front of us, uh, something gaming, Moe's Southwest Grill, so that would be your main food option there, there's a Cold Stone, oh no, there's Jersey Mike's as well, Jersey Mike's subs there, that may actually even be open, but uh, it's only just gone seven here, so this is more the breakfast crowd, not much happening at this end of the mall, Cold Stone Creamery, and then obviously Best Buy if you are in the opening hours and have your electronics needs all kind of squeezed in between the bollard the parking space being a bit narrow and then the back of the stall so no chance for larger vehicles here it may be even harder but we are coming up on 70 percent and uh, i'll get a few more pictures before we unplug and head out here i'm not on the um pass plus plan in this case so i could get that down to 42 cents per kilowatt hour um i just haven't been using Electrify America much and kind of wanted to just plug in for this one session here so uh, probably won't be worth paying in this case but uh, for most people it would um, anyway so we picked out at 198 we've got a couple more minutes here till 80 percent and I'm just going to film around a little bit then we'll get on our way we'll go up to 75 percent just for the roundness of it So we never got above 198, that was really brief, maybe a minute or two. And then the car, this is all in the car, I'm certain it's uh, something to do with the temperature or it's uh, just not wanting to go higher for whatever reason. But we'll be on uh, close to $20 here. Let's stop it up. Yep. Okay, so 33 to 75% in 14 minutes. Uh, $19.15 and our average was 145 kilowatts, so not bad at all. This is the car just kind of doing its thing. If you can see how it, it's not a bad cable, it's just there's kind of awkward in this corner. You know, maybe it's the way I parked as well. You could park a lot uh, further out, especially when it's not that busy, but you see it starts to get quite cramped between this dispenser, the bollard there, Luckily you do have the swing arm. Oh no, wait, I see what you mean. Okay, so I, here's one I'm going to see it missing here. Mine wasn't on the swing arm. So, the ones on the inside, you have to kind of factor this in, which is maybe something you don't want to have to do. The two central ones here just come straight out of the dispenser. 
So they go down and you do have one of the next cables. This one is uh, on the swing arm. So there's probably reasons for positioning it this way. I have to think about the various configurations, but this particular Nex, you could definitely get way further and way more maneuverability. That feels a lot easier to work with than the other one here. So these central ones on the Ford connector unit are going to be kind of much shorter. They're going to be just for the ones with the ports on either side here. If you do happen to need to swing it around the back of the car for any reason, the outer ones are the ones you're going to want to use. So, do that, finish that. Zoom out here a little bit, just to emphasize where we are. So not a million miles away from the interstate, that's kind of, you know, an okay location, but there were gas stations right here, and you start to see where the choice might come in. If you really don't want to spend a super long stop like this, would be a fast charging stop for the Ionic 5, but once you got through traffic, this is easy today, but, you know, on a weekend, this is going to be chock a block and you've got malls between here and that that's uh, just about you know, a little over a mile so it's not bad it's just there is extra slop time there to get off find the charger do all this stuff and get back on whereas if it's one of those that's right off the interstate you're probably saving five ten minutes maybe i could have been sharing with another car that's capable of that kind of 200 maybe 200 plus and uh, we'd both get a very serviceable charge um, for our cars on these Alpatronics, whereas maybe the 350 kilowatts balance chargers would be a little more um, limited. So it's a nice setup, I think. They do seem to have thought it through. So that's Nax coming to Electrify America at these pilot locations right now, but uh, could well be more in uh, the near future. What do you think of these sites? Uh, is this something you've tried down in Florida or here even in Connecticut? Uh, have you enjoyed them? Um, obviously people want more Alptronics out and about, but uh, would Electrify America be the one that you would choose for this? Do you like the setup of the four uh, connectors there? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.